Well, it's Eclipse Day. It's August 21st. Solar eclipse is in progress over the USA. Folk has been breaking her tail, cleaning up 62B for going on 10 days now, I guess. Looks beautiful. Never look cleaner, never look better. We just got to put all the stuff away. Uh, just a quick selfie here. I'm out on the deck. My bike has been in the shop for a week already. Mark in uh, Silverthorne, another garage guy that doesn't know what he's doing. Had the bike from Monday to Thursday. I don't think he did anything with it. We thought it was a brake line leak. It was another shock absorber front end springs leaking. So he opened it up, calls me on Friday, he says, yeah, I, I think we'll have it tomorrow. Calls me Saturday, I don't have the right parts. So we ordered the parts, I hope, on Saturday. Maybe they get in before Foca leaves on the 28th, who knows. So option is to take <laughs> Uber over there. I think it's about 30 bucks to take an Uber ride over to Silverthorne from here. Or the bus. We'll see. Well, I'm out in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. These are the what's now called the Pawnee Buttes. Almost the main character in Mishner's novel Centennial. And I can't think of a closer way to get there, but it says no trespassing, prohibited. So I'm going to take a look at this. Well, I don't think you can get a much better view of the twin, twin buttes from anywhere without walking up to them. But this is the scenery. I'm going to read a passage in the book, my Motorcycle Colorado book. And I'll just scan, uh, scan this area here. Here's a, I don't know if these are gas or oil pumps, but they're all over this section. This is 300 square miles of the Pawnee National Grasslands Park, National, it's not a national park, but it's a grasslands area. And in the distance you can see a forest of windmills. It's fairly windy today, maybe only 10, 12 miles an hour blowing. But it's a beautiful day and I'm glad I didn't take the motorcycle here because this is the typical road that I've been on is, I think this is a, a good section of the gravel, a lot of it is pitted. Here's a little little selfie of the Pawnee National Grasslands and I'll scan around me over my shoulder here take a look at the James Mishner in his book called them the Twin Buttes but I highly recommend the reading that book to get an understanding of the history of Colorado I'm going to read it again maybe with Ethan's help we'll read it together to the two little kids Talk to y'all later. Well, here's the book I was talking about, a marvelous motorcycling Colorado with all kinds of references and by Steve Farson, really did a super job. I'm going to read now from a section of the Pawnee Buttes. The two solitary buttes rise 300 feet above the prairie and remain standing as anomalies in an area where erosion has lowered everything else around them. Quite the contrast. It should be noted that erosion hasn't sunk everything for the Pawnee Buttes access and overlook area sits atop ledges of yet to be fully eroded cliffy rock. The views are far and panoramic and one could easily spend extended time here, perhaps hiking the trails to the Buttes from March through June though, the trails are roped off 200 yards from the cliffs to protect nesting falcons, eagles, and hawks. Then he gives some directions and says, pack a lunch. So anybody looking for an adventure in northeastern Colorado, I would recommend this highly. Signing off. Well, I found the, the legal road in here. Here's the Pawnee Boots Trailhead. 
National Grassland, it's what it's called. And I'll scan, I'm still in the car, I'll come out in a minute, but you don't get quite as good a view from here as you did from the other place, but this is a uh, picnic area and a campground. Following that truck, pulling that car for about 10 miles, you can imagine the amount of dust it kicked up, so I took that illegal road, which took me to an actually a better view, but I'll, I'll pan around here for a little bit too. Well, here's a nice map guide, not only showing the area, but telling us that there's 193 acres of open to camping land in the Pawnee National Grassland area and self-guided birding tour, approximately 21 miles long and passes through a variety of bird habitat. So here is the scanning of the Twin Buttes from a little different angle than I had before. The one on the west side and as I say Mishner talks about both of them. I think he called them rattlesnake buttes. The Indians had various names for them through the centuries so he went back a thousand years before the settlement of Colorado where the book started and it's a fascinating book. Recommend it highly. And there's the picnic area, and I might as well give a view of our trusty 2004 Honda MDX license plate, and it's gotten me a lot of places. Here's that another view of that camper that I was following for a while. Big truck cab on it, probably a 28 foot trailer. Here's a signboard. I just took a walk up a little hill. Badger, mule deer, description of the buffalo, the importance of buffalo grass to keeping the ecosystem intact. After the buffalo roam here, but no buffalo anymore. Coyotes, 13 line ground squirrel. It's another signboard talking about the Pawnee grasslands and the Forest Service working with the Bureau of Land Management to get the gas and oil and natural resources here, including the wind. This is a nice poster talking about the millions of years and the Pawnee Buttes began to attract attention when they found fossils here. And there was a competition between dinosaur hunters, Marsh and Cope, were attracting by the strata rich in the specimens around here 30 to 40 million years ago. And this is the last shot of the buttes. I'll do a close up and scan. You can see the windmills in the distance. Power. They said each one can power, I think it said 300 homes, one windmill. That's a lot. It's just an optical illusion, but it looks like um, Indian paintings on the side there. You can almost see a head of a person and a body, maybe riding some kind of an animal. Not real, though. We're talking about, I think they said, 600-foot tall buttes here. Okay, last signboard. There's the Pawnee Buttes near Grover. I came up from New Raymer. The map, the Colorado map, only said Raymer, so I couldn't find that for GPS purposes. I guess I came up pretty much this way here, although you can prove it by me. I'm going to head up to Grover now, get back on I-25 and head to Mark. Here's some samples. This is what I used to do with, with the uh, archaeology expositions, expeditions in Israel for years and one in uh, North Carolina. Just beautiful area. One more scan of this stark countryside. Rolling hills, quite lovely, very desolate. The um, Colorado motorcycle guy said when he was here last, he saw a flock of about, or heard of about a hundred um, prog horn 
are they cattle, deer, and whatever the prog horns are. And they took off when they saw his motorcycle coming like one flock of birds. I want to play my electric guitar.